If you're wondering how long you should run to actually get results, you're watching the right video because I'll break it down goal by goal with real science. Let's say your main goal is to lose fat. I hate to break it to you, but your body doesn't have some magical fat switch that flips at minute 20. People love to say, oh, the fat burning zone starts at 30 minutes, as if your body's sitting there with a stopwatch. Here's the real science. Your body burns a mix of carbs and fat all the time when you run, and what changes is the percentage. As you run longer and keep your pace moderate, let's say between 30 and 60 minutes at a steady pace, you burn a higher proportion of fat. But guess what? If you go faster or do intervals, you burn more total calories, and that matters more for fat loss in the long run. For example, a 70 kilogram or 155 pound person burns 300 calories in 30 minutes of easy running and around 450 calories if they do faster running or intervals. And don't forget, fat loss needs you to be in a calorie deficit throughout the day, not just burning fat during the run. You could do 60 minutes of slow jogging and still wipe it out with two donuts after. Trust me, I've been there. So what's the sweet spot? I recommend either a 30 to 60 minute steady run, which is great if you enjoy it and can stick with it, or a 20 to 30 minute hit run, which is great if you want max calorie burn in less time. Think of your fat loss runs like paying off debt. Shorter and faster runs equal bigger payments in less time. Longer and easier runs are like smaller payments over a longer period. Both work, but it depends on what fits your life. Remember to also combine runs with strength training. It protects your muscle so your body doesn't burn that for fuel and helps you look leaner as you lose fat. Okay, now let's crank it up. What if you're chasing fast weight loss and want results yesterday? To get that quick weight loss most people are dreaming of, I'm talking a pound a week. You're looking at needing a 500 to 700 calorie deficit daily. That means either running a lot, eating a lot less, or realistically both. And here's where it gets tricky. When people try to use running alone for rapid weight loss, they either overdo it and get injured, or they feel so hungry that they binge later. That's why those I'll run every day until I'm skinny plans usually crash and burn by week two. If you really want to drop weight fast with running, you'd probably be doing 45 to 60 minute runs daily or near daily at a moderate to hard effort. But, and this is a big but, you need to recover enough and fuel smartly so you don't tank your energy or start burning muscle instead of fat. Quick weight loss through running is like trying to drive cross country on half a tank. Yeah, you'll cover distance fast at first, but you'll stall if you don't plan it right. What works better is combining those longer runs with smart eating and maybe a splash of interval work to crank up the calorie burn without wrecking your legs. Now let's talk legs. Can running actually build strength, or is that just gym bro territory? Let's clear this up. Yes, running can build leg strength, but not all running is created equal. If you're jogging slowly for miles on end, you're mainly building muscular endurance. Your quads, calves, and hamstrings will get better at repetitive effort, but don't expect those slow miles to turn your legs into tree trunks. Think of it like doing a thousand reps with a pencil. That shows great stamina, but honestly, no real power. But when you turn up the intensity with sprinting, hill charges, and stair runs, you start recruiting those fast twitch muscle fibers that actually contribute to strength and size. Sprinting stimulates the same pathways that resistance training does, like the activation of MTOR, which helps drive muscle protein synthesis. In simple terms, sprints tell your legs it's time to get stronger. Hills are another secret weapon. Uphill running increases muscle activation, especially in the glutes and hamstrings compared to flat ground. Plus, running downhill hammers your quads eccentrically. That eccentric loading is a proven strength builder. It's the same principle behind heavy negative reps in the gym, so no wonder your quads feel trashed after a mountain trail. So how long do you need to run for leg strength? You don't need marathon distances. 20 to 30 minutes of focused hill repeats or sprints is far more effective for strength gains than an hour of slow jogging. Even elite runners use these sessions to build power and economy. Kenyan distance runners often include short hill sprints in their training to develop leg drive. But what if you want to upgrade your engine, the thing that powers all your runs? Let's talk VO2 max. 
that magic number that tells you how much oxygen your body can use during intense exercise. The bigger it is, the better your engine. And if you really want to move the needle on VO2 max, the science points to high intensity intervals as your best bet. Short, high intensity intervals lead to a maximal oxygen uptake within a couple of minutes. And more importantly, they increase your aerobic power. That's because those hard intervals push your heart, lungs, and muscles to their limit, forcing them to adapt fast. They increase stroke volume, meaning how much blood your heart pumps per beat, and make your muscles better at pulling oxygen from your blood. So how long should you run? For VO2 max, it's less about piling on the miles and more about hitting that red line. 20 to 30 minute sessions with structured intervals work wonders. And no, you don't have to do them every day. Two sessions a week can deliver big gains if you're consistent. All right, now let's go long. What's the deal with running for pure endurance or gearing up for a marathon? Endurance is about one thing, teaching your body to keep going when it really wants to quit. You're not just building legs that can handle miles here. You'll be training your heart, lungs, and muscles to become a fuel-efficient machine. Think of it like upgrading your car from a gas guzzler to a hybrid. So how long do you actually need to run? Well, endurance gains really start showing up once you push past about 45 minutes per session. That's when your body begins adding more mitochondria, those little power plants in your muscle cells, and growing more capillaries to deliver oxygen. Now, if you're thinking about a marathon, 45 minutes isn't gonna cut it. Marathon training means stretching those long runs progressively until you can cover at least 30 or 35 kilometers or 18 to 22 miles in a single go during your peak weeks. That's why you need to condition your muscles and stamina, true, but also train your body to burn fat efficiently and spare precious glycogen so you don't hit the dreaded wall. And no, it's not about hammering every run. Most marathon programs rely on easy pace long runs to build endurance without burning you out. That conversational pace I always mention is where the magic happens. Your body learns to go longer while staying efficient. So for general endurance, aim for a weekly long run of 60 to 90 minutes, building gradually. For marathons, you're looking at those two to three hour long runs spaced out sensibly so you don't trash your legs. And please, don't try to race your long runs. The goal is to build that hybrid engine, not blow a gasket. But maybe you're just here to keep your heart strong. How long should you run for a healthier, longer life? If you're running mainly to keep your heart strong, the good news is you don't need to live in your running shoes. In fact, studies show even short runs can make a serious difference. Let's start with one of my favorite data points, a large study that tracked over 55,000 adults for 15 years. They found that people who ran as little as 5 minutes a day at slow speeds, we're talking jogging pace, slashed their risk of dying from heart disease by 45%. That's huge. Of course, the more you do up to a point, the bigger the benefit. The World Health Organization and CDC both recommend at least 150 minutes a week of moderate exercise like easy running or 75 minutes of vigorous exercise like faster running for optimal heart health. That's roughly three to five half an hour runs a week if you're keeping it steady. So why does running work so well? It's because it trains your heart to pump more blood with each beat, improves blood vessel flexibility, and helps regulate blood pressure and cholesterol. You're literally conditioning your heart muscle, like giving it a gym session every time you run. But let's clear up a myth. Running more isn't always better for your heart. Extreme endurance athletes, like ultra marathoners who run for hours on end, week after week, have been shown in some studies to develop heart muscle scarring over time. That's not to scare you, it's just a reminder that moderation really is magic when it comes to cardio health. So that's it from me. Now, I wanna hear from you. Tell me in the comments, what's your running goal? I'll be reading every single one and replying. And if you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe. It really helps small channels like mine grow. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next video.